It is always good to be in community here with the Church of the Larger Fellowship. I'm Margaret Lee Belazaire, one of the learning fellows here. I am specifically working with um, the mis prison ministry side of things here at the CLF. Funny thing happened once I decided to self-quarantine. All of a sudden, I had a problem with being home. Or better yet, I had a problem with not being home. What makes this interesting is that I have been missing home. Since seminary, I spend one to three nights a week away from home. And, um, and I'm always living out of a suitcase. So it was weird for me when I realized now that I had the opportunity to be home, I was missing it. I guess it's a case of the grass being greener on the other side. Now, I have since, I believe, I've come to terms with the fact that I am a homebody and I don't mind being home. And not only that, now that I have an opportunity to slow down, I am able to see that there are many things I have been grateful for in, in these difficult times that we're living in. I am, for example, grateful that my neighbor, my next door neighbor, that we are communicating more by text. We're, we're sharing uh, supplies. I am grateful for not having to drive on uh, the Merritt Parkway here in Connecticut where I live, where it's just a two-lane highway and if there's an accident, it could be, it could take forever to get from one place to the next. I am grateful to have a home to self-quarantine in. I'm grateful to being able to clean up for a little bit something as small as that. It may seem just I just haven't had time to running back and forth, always picking up here and there, but having time to clean my home and make it as, make it as comfortable as possible. And I am not only, I am also grateful for the connections that I'm making. I'm reaching out a lot more to people than I used to before by phone, because I, was, I took it for granted that I would see them. At the same time, there are some griefs that I'm experiencing around, for example, human contact, the obvious, right? I am an affectionate person and I love hugs. So I'm grieving that. Um, this is my last semester as a seminarian at Midville Lombard and classes are now online and I don't get to see my friends that I had been looking forward to. And uh, Reverend Meg mentioned earlier graduations are canceled. I'm grieving the fact that I won't be able to have a graduation ceremony with the people I started seminary with. And I especially grieve visiting with friends, something I took for granted. Every Sunday, I went over, just about every Sunday, rather, I went over my friend Sharon's home and just spent time there with her and, and her kids, and I'm not able to do that. So I guess what I want to say to you is, as we are dealing with this new reality that we are facing, Take time to be grateful with some of the opportunities you've, you've been given. Some of the things that you were planning on doing or wanting to do, you haven't been able to do because you had to move at a much faster pace. So slow down if you can and take care of those things. But also don't forget that you are experiencing losses and allow yourself to feel um, the grief and allow yourself to be sad about all the things we're missing. Thank you. I'm Antonia Bell Delgado. I'm the Senior Learning Fellow at the um, Church of the Larger Fellowship. And mostly I do worship and I do some tech support on the um, View, our live uh, talk show that happens at 11 on Thursday, 11 Eastern time. When I started to think about our topic of grief and gratitude, I thought that I haven't heard many people talk about what happens when you are a person who has experienced trauma. 
and how that trauma response seems to be exacerbated in times where everyone is feeling just anxious and beyond their normal capacity to understand and to cope with life. So I realized that I couldn't breathe and not just because I have bronchitis, but because I wasn't taking deep breaths anymore. I was panting and it was only making me more anxious. I thought about the things I've learned being a person who has experienced trauma for most of my childhood. And I thought, oh, that's right. I have spidey senses. I know most of the people call it hypervigilance, but somewhere along the way, a therapist, a child therapist told me that they could be my spidey senses, that I, I could feel when something wasn't right. And I had a very good sense of examining my surroundings and figuring out what I needed to do to be safe. So I wanna to talk to you today about the spidey senses that I believe we all have and the spidey senses that we're developing. For the other people like me who've experienced trauma, I want you to know that we've got this. We've got this even when we are anxious, even when we're having panic attacks, even when we go back into the ways of being that helped us to be safe, but they didn't help us to grow and develop. I wanted you to know that we can sit back and evaluate a situation. We can determine the risk as well as the implication of our actions. We are aware that we have to breathe through the moments, even when the moments are painful, and even if we don't know what's gonna happen next, because it really is just one moment, and we breathe through it deep into our lungs, and that moment passes, and then we breathe again. We've got this one moment at a time. And once I started breathing, I started to think about what is it that helps me be okay? And some of the things I thought about are nature. Of course, nature helps me be okay because nature kind of makes sense to me. I understand why the trees do what they do and I understand why the water does what it does. And I understand that sometimes nature just does its thing and it's not personal, it just happens. And then I remembered that I could check into my body Every day, I can just check in. I can close my eyes and I can ask myself the curious question of why, why is everything so tense? What is my body trying to tell me? And I can check in from the top all the way to the bottom and ask that same question. Body, what do you need to be okay? It just happens that way. And then I ask myself, what do I need to get through this moment? And sometimes it is physical touch. I happen to be privileged to be in a place that other people are here that I can experience that. And I have friends who are not. And so when they reach out to me, we just reach out to the screen. We can't hold our hands there together. And we say loving things to each other. It's not touch, but it is love and it is emotion and it is shared, and that's what we have for right now. And we know that they're not alone, and that even when everything is going on around my house and the introverted me is saying, why won't you extroverts leave? Oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> I still have a place. I'm finding gratitude in boredom, which is interesting because I don't like to be bored, but I've found that there's a gift in boredom. There's a moment where I can think and explore and intuit. There's a moment where I get to actually be introspective with nothing else around it, just the stillness, and I can be still. I can decide what is next, or I can decide that there's nothing next at all. There's a gift in boredom. And yes, grief and loss are happening. They're happening all around us. I know that I mourn the freedom of movement. I mourn the plans that I had and the connections that happen in all of my plans. I do mourn them. I mourn my community 
And I'm learning through this Zoom world that my community is so much wider than I remembered when I was too busy to pay attention. And that is a gift that I've been given. I'm grateful to still have ways to connect. I'm grateful that I have ways to meet new people and do new things. I'm grateful for the time that I have to be introspective and to slow down. And I am grateful for you. I am so grateful that we can be here to today together and to worship. I am grateful for this weekly worship space where I can just be. Thank you for just being with me.